just like a magical girl like because that one's like pretty much done but like i want to be a magical girl <laughs> don't we all in my life <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to GalaxyCon Live, where we bring the convention experience directly to you. I'm your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno. Based on the light novel series by Aniko Yusagi, the first season of the anime ran in early 2019 and has gone on to become a very popular series in the isekai, or another world, subgenre of fantasy anime. It has received an additional two seasons, with the third releasing in early 2022, and we are very excited to have a conversation with some of the wonderful English language voice actors who bring this wonderful world to life. So without further ado, let's start bringing them out to our virtual stage, beginning with the voice of Sankaku in Dragon Ball Super, 13 in My Hero Academia, Desperata in Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, and Glass in The Rising of the Shield Hero. Please welcome Morgan Berry to our virtual stage. Hey, Morgan. Hey, guys. I'm happy to be here. Happy to have you here. And we are also happy to have the voice of Shu Kurenai in Beyblade Burst, Pixis Rusk in Saint Seiya, The Lost Canvas, Suryu in One Punch Man, and Ren Amaki in The Rising of the Shield Hero. Please welcome Alan Lee to our virtual stage. Hello, hey. hello. Welcome, glad welcome. That. How you doing today? Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Awesome, awesome. So also joining us here on the virtual stage, you know them as Nika Aoi in Beyblade Burst, Kyo Terauchi in Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and Melty Melremark in The Rising of the Shield Hero. Please welcome Jackie Lastra to our virtual stage. Hey, Jackie. Hi, guys. How are you doing? We are doing just fine. How are you doing over there? I'm excellent. Very excited to be here today. <clears throat> Awesome, awesome. And rounding out our isekai quartet of sorts for this particular <laughs> panel. <laughs> Glad you caught that yeah. one. <laughs> you know them as Shigeru Alba in Neon Genesis Evangelion, Durham in B Stars, Rui in Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, and now Fumi Iwatani in The Rising of the Shield Hero. Please welcome Billy Kometz to our virtual stage. Hey there, Billy. How are we doing, going? everybody? Hey, Billy. Hey, hey. Billy. Awesome. Dude, Mario, you are so good with all the names, man. Oh my god. I was just like, thank you, thank you. Did it again. <laughs> I out. can't even pronounce the title of Demon Slayer. <laughs> I, I've uh, I've had to MC a lot of cosplay masquerades over the years. <laughs> so, the good shows. Shows. Well done. <laughs> no, but thank you all for being here. Um and Thanks for having us. No, of course. Uh, as I mentioned at the uh, the top of the stream, before we get into our fan questions, just to kind of get us warmed up a little bit. Um Rising of the Shield Hero uh, has become one of the most uh, popular of the isekai subgenre of fantasy anime. Uh, certainly in a few cases, uh, we have folks who have worked on more than one isekai. So I wanted to get uh, just personal thoughts, whether it be, you know, isekai to isekai or other things in your uh, resumes that make this show personally stand out to you compared to these other shows that you've worked on or other isekai shows that you've worked on. Anyone can take this one to start. Uh, yeah, I think this one, I think it's always funny to hear people talk about this one where they'll be like, yeah, I don't like isekais. I don't, I don't watch those. And then they'll be, but I love Rising of the Shield Hero. And I always think it's funny to hear people say that. So I guess, yeah, it really just takes that formula. And I don't know, I guess it, it does it in a way that it's really fascinating and interesting. And just the, from the episode one, like I was just like, okay, I'm in. And I remember we recorded that one. Uh, we recorded the pilot. <laughs> Uh, and then we didn't do the season. They just kind of shopped it around. And like, do you want us to keep making this? And I remember being a part of that. And then months going by, I was like, I really hope they pick that up because that was freaking awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah, I just I was hooked from episode one for sure. But yeah, I think what stands out about that one is now Fumi being like the anti-hero, and it's just a direction that not a lot of Isekais have gone mm. yet. Right. And so I think that just stands out. He's not just like handed all these awesome powers. It's just like, hey, you gotta you gotta grind and you gotta yeah. work your way up. And it I feel like as some game. as a gamer, like I'm used to that. And I'm you and it's just like it was just I could relate very much to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, the big difference for me compared to the other isekai that I may or may not be working on right now um, is that I feel like the isekai like aspect is kind of in the background. It's just like it's just there, whereas this is actually part of the world. And like, 
you know, Nafumi and, and, and the other characters like journeys, you know, the, the characters who are brought into this world, they actually have to go through that grind and you get to see that yeah. process and it becomes a part of their development. Whereas other ones, I feel like, again, no offense to the other ones, but um, it, it just feels like random, normal dude just gets sucked in <laughs> and like in this magical world, no one knows what they're doing and is completely incompetent. <laughs> and suddenly it's this this normal guy's job to like, you know, like do everything. But in this one, people struggle. And um, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that. I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like the struggles feel more real. Mm -hmm. in shield hero and i think that's what i like about it i was on the edge of my seat right from the first episode just like i was frustrated for now for me mm -hmm. so i i like that i that i can feel that way while watching the show <laughs> yeah uh, and, and again uh you know alan made made a very good point there about you know the the kind of tropes that you see in this genre uh and how it really uh, a lot of the most successful ones have really found ways to subvert it uh, in their own unique ways uh so everything that that you guys have kind of brought to the table really uh illustrate what it is that helps shield hero you know stand above the rest so it makes a, a ton of sense especially if you're you know very new to you know not just anime but this particular sub -genre. Um, because again, it has become very all-encompassing uh, in in terms of the the prevalence of the the isekai trope. <laughs> so to to have these shows that yeah. really you know stand head and shoulders on their own because of these unique attributes, it's it's always such a, a refreshing change of pace. So thank Absolutely. you for for the opening thoughts on that. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sure that we have a lot of enthusiastic fans who are ready to ask some questions. So let's see if we've got some ready to go over here. So Thank we can you. take it right into the fan questions. Okay, great. We have one from Callie to lead it off. What is your favorite scene from the show? There's so oh. many. Yeah. So um, <laughs> my my favorite as like my character was definitely telling my sister off. Um, like she just she has such great lines. And there's this one scene in particular where she's in the throne room and Malty's just you know being herself. And she's just like telling me that it's it's I don't know that it's her concern. I'm like, frankly, sister, it's none of your business. And that was my favorite scene in the entire thing. I I have two. Um, and and these are just because of the feelings that they gave me. One was the showdown between everyone versus Naofumi, where they think Melty's being you know held prisoner. Um, and like he has to like you know fend them off. Um, that one and uh, glasses in uh, gr glasses entrance. That was actually um, when when she just comes in and just just wipes the floor with everyone. But like her entrance is so like bad. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> feel that Morgan Berry. <laughs> no, but seriously that was, that, that was that was probably my favorite. Uh, those are two of my favorite uh, scenes. Yeah, I have two as well. Uh, I feel like I talk about episode eight a bunch. That's the Rage Shield episode. Uh, mm -hmm. After that dragon fight, um, Raftalia gets hurt and they're like oh, back yeah, in the village cool. and they're mending up and everything like that. And he like tucks her in and then he walks outside and like the music in the show is so freaking good. But like the music just like kicks in just right. And he's like looking up at the moon. And he's like, I have to grow stronger along with the people that believe in me. And it's like the first little instance you see of like, oh, he's breaking down and starting to trust and love again. It's like it's just like I thought that was a really, really beautiful moment. Um, and also, I think it's right when they find Melty. And she's sleeping in uh, Philo's <laughs> feathers, but they thought that she ate her. Um, that, that, that was a really, really funny scene where there's like, we don't talk about this. We never talk about this. She's like, we can't. What? This, at the, yeah, that, that one guy. <laughs> okay, so I, I like shows that make me emotional. Okay? I like scenes that make me angry. I like scenes that make me cry. And there were just so many moments where I was just rooting for an alpha me and I was just like, just yelling at the screen. I'm just like, Oh my God, my boy. And so, uh, there's too many of those moments to count where I'm just rooting for him because he's just being just torn apart and just put through the, through the ringer. He's uh, everyone's against him. And I know we've all been there, you know, we've all felt yeah. that way. And so I'm just like, Oh, my heart. And 
all of those scenes. Too many to count because he was just, mm. he's been through a lot. My, my boy's <laughs> been through a lot. And yeah, so, poor boy. but like, as far as emotional scenes, just all the scenes that made me angry and sad, I love those scenes. But I also mm -hmm. love the scenes where justice prevails and when Malty, they change her name. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on, <laughs> on stream, but yeah, they change her name. That moment was just very like, mwah, chef's kiss. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get to our next question, uh, I, I just wanted to point out, uh, so Billy, you mentioned the, the, the score. Um, for those of you who aren't completely familiar, uh, Kevin Penkin, uh, one of the, the few Western composers working in anime uh, who has done just incredible work, both in anime and gaming, uh, was the composer for this score. Uh, so I got good. the chance to, to speak to him as part of a musician's roundtable at uh, last way. year's yes. Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. Great nice. guy, incredibly talented. Uh, go look up uh, some of the work that Kevin has done because, man, you, you want to talk chef's kiss. Like yeah. mm, his his com his compositional work is just absolutely phenomenal. So thanks for for giving me an opportunity to scream oh about gosh. good good absolutely. Kevin Penkin <laughs> and his good good, good stuff from Shield Hero is on Spotify. And if you need a good workout playlist or like a how <laughs> fast can I run thing, it's so good. <laughs> oh man, we got so you. <laughs> they just get you pumped, right? Yeah. Uh, and and he he works with such a, a broad variety of genres, but uh, his his orchestral compositions in particular, uh, especially for anime, are just absolutely magnificent. So yeah, let's move along stuff. to our next question. Let's see what we have waiting here. This one is from Serenity. What characteristics do you share with your character? Um, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Strong sense of justice. I. <laughs> that sounded so corny. No, justice. No, but I like. Justice. I hate because because like okay. So I was bullied when I was little. So I hate when people are being bullied and put down. And the fact that she is always like going up against the people who are being tyrannical and putting others down. Like that just means so much to me. Yeah. Justice. <laughs> um. Let me see here. I feel like I really love uh, the caring side of now for me. I feel like those are the things that I really love to see in the show. And those are the parts that kind of tug at my heartstrings the most. Uh, he doesn't let a lot of people in. Um, but once they are in, like, you're like, okay, sticking with you. And I, I got your back. I got you, whatever you need. I feel like yeah. I try to do that for sure. Uh, my character is a, <laughs> I don't know how, if I'm, are we allowed to swear? Seriously, like, what's what's the policy? On that? Uh, we've we've definitely gotten uh, a, a little bit salty with the language in past ones. Uh, I for this one, given the time of day, let's try and keep it PG. Oh, okay, yeah. My uh, my 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 character's a bit of a jerk to say the least. Um, <laughs> I was gonna go with other, you know, colorful, much more colorful language, but um, he's say a, perhaps he, an a hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, well, he. Here's the thing. He's he's one of the other three a holes in this show. But he's the late, he's the least a hole ish, I'd like to say. <laughs> um, and I think I think I think the redeeming factor for 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 Ren, um, I mean, I could joke about how I am an a hole as well, and that's no. But uh, but joke that's where you were going. No, I know, right? <laughs> like we're both a holes, and we're good with the blade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, um, but I I'd like uh, there are parts where where uh, Ren is the only one of the other three who like tries or at least attempts to like hear Naofumi out or like being like, hey, no, that's not, you know, like it's not his fault or like, you know, like he's just trying to make an intellectual compromise with Naofumi, even though he has his sort of like um, his his hesitations with the character. Um, but he at least tries to go out and <clears throat> hear people out and, and kind of analyze and see <clears throat> Like, is this is this really that person's fault or anything like that? Um, yeah, that's 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 probably it. <laughs> I do that. I'll I'll listen to someone else and before I make a judgment. Um, so yeah. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> um, characteristics we have in common with our characters we voice. Uh, glass. I think her sense of loyalty. Am I right? That's the question one, right? Yeah, okay. yeah characteristics mm -hmm. that you share with uh, okay, with cool. your character. Yeah, um, 
her sense of loyalty to her to her friends and to her world uh without going into too much detail because i don't want to spoil it for anyone but she she's all about that loyalty and i i feel the same way so i definitely have that in common with her Rock and roll. Thank you very much for those uh, wonderful and insightful answers. Let's move along to our next question. Let's see what we got waiting in the wings. This one is coming from Lynn. If you could have any of the abilities or powers from the show, what would you choose and what would you use it for? Just to make it even easier, doesn't have to be your own characters. Sky's oh. the limit. Mm. Oh. I feel like he utilizes I, I would take one of my characters i feel like now for me uses the airstrike shield in such cool ways where he just like makes a platform in the sky and then like jumps off it i think that would be a useful thing to have just all the time just airstrike shield and you just like yeah. go anywhere i think mm. that'd be awesome mm. I glass love utilizes oh. <laughs> no go ahead glass utilizes her fans in such a cool way um, I, I think that'd be really cool. You could fly, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you, you're working with air. You could fly with those fans. I think that'd be really cool. That'd be sweet. <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah. I love Melty's water power. I think, yeah, I, I love, I love water bending. And I feel like if I were an avatar, I would be a water bender. So yeah, I I would love to be able to do that. That'd be so cool. I love that answer. I love that. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> truly, you you have your your core element there. <laughs> I, here's the thing. I love pyro, and like that's whenever I get a character or like a Pokemon, I always go fire. Me too. But in my heart, I know that I am a water <laughs> person. You're running from your true waterness. Yeah. I am. Uh oh man, I don't know. If I had the powers of my character, I'd be a terrorist. Um <laughs> probably like, like no 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 no. I mean like 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 if I had the powers, like I'd be labeled a terrorist. So like no, those like the the combat stuff. It's like no, I wouldn't I wouldn't want that. I don't I don't want that in my life. Um uh the the the, the weapons abilities to like analyze like plants and like all that sort of stuff oh, and yeah, that's cool. Um and utilizing that information and knowledge, I think that would be really cool. Um, I'm assuming all of their weapons can do it. It's just we just follow Naofumi, and he's the only one who actually does it. This is yeah. true. Um, but yeah, no, just being able to see other, you know, absorb that information through whatever weapon I have would be cool. So then, uh, a, a, a bit of a curveball uh, on the spot here. So, uh, if we could take that same ability but not use it for weapons, what would you rather use it for? <laughs> <laughs> cosplay I'm <laughs> yeah, ditto ditto yeah. yes to, to be fair that would, that would actually be incredibly handy so that is a good call i don't know why the first thought i go to is like slip and slide because <laughs> if i got water powers jackie they sell that you know that <laughs> I know, but like, but I you can get it for like free own, exactly see morgan knows it's up <laughs> in my backyard like that would be excellent yes I would use airstrike shield for decor uh, rather than have like a big wall in my house. Just like a big shield made of air. This really opens up and brightens up the room. Not I think. a lot of privacy yeah. with that. Uh, you know, you pick and choose. Look, I, it'll be out to the backyard when that's I have what the, That's okay. what his coffin ability is for, right? If he wants to. Oh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's for the price. Brings up the property value. Yeah, like <laughs> who needs blinds? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. All right, let's move on to our next question. Let's see what we have waiting in the wings. This one is from Roslyn. Ooh, okay. Uh, career question. How did you get your first acting role? I auditioned. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, okay. So my story, everyone's got their own journey, their own story. For me, I, I've been acting for about 17 years now on stage, a little bit of on camera. And then I competed in a voice acting competition. And through that, I won that competition. And through that, I got my first audition at Funimation. I auditioned for a few projects. I started booking. And I think my first ever voiceover role was in Fairy Tale as additional voices. 
And then a few months later, I booked my first lead as Tokaku in Riddle Story of Devil. And that was really an exciting moment for me. Heck yeah. Nice. Yeah. I came at it from a musical theater point. Uh, so I got brought out here uh, to California six years ago um, to play Aladdin in the Aladdin musical spectacular. And, yeah. uh, oh, was nice. awesome. <laughs> and then I was excited about that because uh, I'd always want to do voiceover and um, being out in California, I was like, okay, I can finally pursue that. But I was doing musicals for a while when I got out here and that eventually led to uh, one of the, uh, the music director was like, hey, you should go audition for this thing, uh, this little shop um, audition uh, for the dentist. And I was like, OK, cool. And I didn't book it, but I got to talk to the guy that was casting and he runs a dubbing studio out here. So I got brought into um, a live action Brazilian dub uh, that we dubbed into English. And that was my first nice. foray into voiceover. So that was nice. that was awesome. Nice. Cool. Um, <laughs> mine was, uh, for voiceover, it was, uh, also an, uh, uh, yeah, a voiceover competition at an anime convention. Um, and that's how I got it into a audition with Bang Zoom, uh, which was the first place that I worked with. And so I had an audition for like, uh, a, a little series called East. Um, East Eight uh, was my first yeah. acting role, first voice acting role, and I played Ricota, and that was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I never intended to get into anime. <laughs> 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 um, I was told no, 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 and, and backstory. Um, I originally got into voiceover for commercial, which I mm. kind of do, but like, um, it's a lot more character work these days, but. Uh, one of the pieces of advice I was given when I started out was try to avoid anime because a lot of people, they, there's a stigma against it. Um, don't do it because agents won't take you seriously. You know, people look down upon it. And so I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, and then there was a girl I liked <laughs> who really wanted to, uh, uh, and this is while I was still in school, who really wanted to do like the competition at Anime Expo. Uh, through bang zoom and i was like oh, i don't want i don't want to but and she was like but you're really you'd be great i want you to be there with me uh and i really liked her and so <laughs> i entered and uh yeah and then i entered and then tony oliver oliver was there and he was like you're really good at this and i was like thank you and, I, and he was like you should take classes and i was like okay sure um and then over at the classes, Tony was like, "You're really good at this. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, like put you in with Mommy Okada, who's uh, head of casting there." And like nine months later, I finally heard back, got my first audition, uh, which was uh, for the show called Gargantia. Uh, it was my oh, first wow. audition yeah, ever, yeah. and I booked it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and now, yeah, which yeah. never and, happens. Yeah, that That's that cool. never happens. I'm an anomaly. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but yeah, no, but that was the way I got it. That That is amazing. Uh, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I know exactly which competition you're talking about. I'm also so amused because that story, it, it, it just to, to kind of take us away for a quick moment, uh, reminds me of a story from uh, Bryce Pappenbrook that he shared uh, this past summer uh, when we were doing a roundtable for, for voice acting, uh, how he basically booked Masomi Kita from Dudadada. <laughs> <laughs> his, yeah. his, he was trying to impress his now wife and that was how he was like oh, bringing the swagger of so Kita cute. and that's how we ended up with his performance of Kita which was his first breakthrough role and that's I think it was awesome. his first anime role too so it's just hilarious that's hearing this parallel I'm just like oh I love this yeah, I love no, this. Bryce has been around since like Cowboy Bebop right like he played he played really? one of the kids with the pot yeah he was the pothead kid oh. um, at, the, at the orphanage yeah his dad was in the industry anyways but he's not here so <laughs> oh man um yeah but yeah so i just i, I had to, to quickly uh give us a quick aside because that just that That's reminded awesome. me of that and it was just a fun little story that just yeah. shows you know it, it may sound a little bit silly to, to some people but no really these are the kinds of things that weirdly can get your foot in the door <laughs> in the industry so it's everyone has their own journey all righty yeah. we are going to move along to our next question this one is uh, I, I love this. This is from Nami. <laughs> what is your most memorable moment in the recording booth? Oh, man. 
Ooh. We recorded it so long ago. Are, are we talking about just this show or just in general? <laughs> Whatever comes to mind. Yeah. Like if you have a memorable uh, moment, whether it's this show or uh, over the course of your career, anything's fair game. Okay. I see Morgan's ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm really proud of this moment. Okay. Now this, this isn't, ha doesn't have anything to do with shield hero, but this is a memorable moment when I was recording for okay. a show called, um, wise man's grandchild. Uh, and, um, I voiced for a, a boy named Thor and one of the scenes he's in like a hot tub and onsen with a bunch of other dudes. And I decided to leave a, a booth bomb, which is just basically uh, an intentional blooper for the next actor that steps into the booth. <laughs> I wanted to beat them up. I wanted to make them laugh. So instead of hearing the actual line, they would hear whatever I decided I wanted them to hear. So instead of saying my line, I sang, I did a little meme. I sang, few bros chilling in a hot tub, five feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> Does anyone get that reference? Yes. It's, it's, I love it. It's one of my favorites. It was just a joke, you know, a fun little, little meme. And I did it and it fit the flaps. <gasps> it fit the animated mouth flaps perfectly. So he kept it in. <laughs> he kept it in for the other actors that came into the booth. And I'm happy to say it went over well. Somebody fell out of their chair <laughs> laughing. I'm, so I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Mission complete. <laughs> yes. I think um, that for me, oh if we're going Shield Hero, uh, it would be episode eight again. It was the Raid Shield episode. I just remember. Okay. Do you guys ever have one of those days where it's like, on most days, I can't hit the history of Tenacious D vocally, you know, but like oh, on wow. some days, on some <laughs> days, like just like something's going on. You're like, I can hit everything today. <laughs> so it, I was having one of those days. And uh, I remember they showed me the whole like he gets the raid shield and then like he has like this big like scream thing where he is like has like this charge up thing that like lasts like 10 seconds and then like this release power screen that lasts like another 10 seconds and i was like oh i'm going for this today and i remember like i just like went for it and it sounded really cool and the next day i had a session for jojo's and oh no, I had to leave <laughs> no. That session early because i <laughs> messed up my throat <laughs> and i had to just go sleep for a couple days uh but it sounded great and i thought that was really fun <laughs> so. worth it it turned out great yeah, yep. um, that's, that's real guess... passion, suffering for your art. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe he's being loud. Um, I think my favorite, and I actually like, I just tweeted about this, so I hate to like bring it up like two days later. Totally fine. But there was this one uh, in this one game that I was in, I the Somnium Files. Um, they, there was one time where. I was supposed to just do like this whole slew of impersonations of just random things. And uh, one of the, the prompts that I was supposed to do was the sound of air calling home after being gone for a long time. And I remember just reading that and just, it broke me. I was just like, mm -hmm. what? Air? What? What does air even sound like? And I it just that was one of those moments that, like there's been so many of these like when you're in the booth and you're just like I guess for me because I'm still fairly new at this um where it's just like I don't know what that sounds like or what is even going to but look we're going to give it our best shot and hope it comes out all right and it did and it was a lot of fun but can uh, can I ask what it did sound like? <laughs> Mom! Nailed it. Yes. Nailed it. <laughs> We're clipping that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's that that that's gonna be like the, the, the pre-roll for the YouTube edition of this panel. There we go. Saved saved you some trouble, engineer friend. <laughs> oh man. Uh most memorable. I don't I don't know. Uh I mean the most fun that I can recall in the booth or the proudest moment that I have uh, for, for being in the booth was uh, during the, during the beginning of the pandemic, I did great pretender. Um, oh, and, and, oh, yes, and, yes, yes. And, and I'd like to say more than half of that. I was dubbing blindly because 
like this the 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 connection was just not happening um but uh yeah yeah like it's like i i think they're like okay this this yell right here is like 12 seconds long or something like that and like the and so i would literally just have my phone and um and and try to like like mimic what the character was doing on screen physically flailing about and um uh and i couldn't see the video so uh i added some extra stuff at the end just tim just jerking about and um it kind of it, it accidentally fit and i feel like those moments are like ah oh, that's gold like you just you're just in your own head space and and it's great um and yeah it just happened to fit so you know i think recent uh, you know from from what i can remember that's that's a victory for me nice nice yeah, that 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 show was uh, very very fun to watch, uh, especially the first arc. Uh, you know, yeah. taking place in Los Angeles. Uh, one of the things that stuck out to me, I I love it when things do this. I called it out for the Love Live movie, uh, and I definitely called this out for for Great Pretender. Just the attention to detail for some of the locales. I think there's an early scene in like the first or second episode. Uh, they go to a mall, and I'm like, wait a minute, I think that's like the one on I think it's like Seventh Street <laughs> over in downtown yeah, yeah, LA. Yeah. I'm like. Wow. Okay, they did their research on that the one. Most I, oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, that I've one. been to that. Me. That same Macy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that 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 one I've you know spent a lot of time passing by whenever I'm uh, you know staying in downtown LA or you know one time I had to scout that entire area out for an event and I'm like, oh, I recognize that very quickly. Good job, great pretender. <laughs> So yeah, that that show that show is fun. So I'm glad to to hear that it's, it's part of a of work on, <laughs> a great memory for you. All right, we're gonna move along to our next question. This one is from Christy. What other fandom would you like to see have a crossover with Rising of the Shield Hero? And no, nothing else that is an Isekai Quartet counts. We're gonna make this. Uh, I've been very generous <laughs> this, this entire <laughs> panel, but that that'll be too easy. <laughs> yeah. I oh man a crossover mm. with another. Ooh, what what other fandom? The My Hero Academia. Yeah, okay. that All would right. be fun. I think that'd be pretty rad. I'd like uh, to see Monica crossover. Monica Magico. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have Cube start all the contracts with all the all the <gasps> uh, the heroes. Oh no, <laughs> that'd be cool. Nice. Um, Pokemon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, seriously, right, like yes. like all of them are are trainer. You know, like get this. Yeah. All of them are trainers. Like they have to grind, and if you lose, it's like a nuzlocke. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. Pokemon. That's a good one. Nice. I'm gonna go. Um, I was a part of a show called Mister Osomatsu, and uh, ah I yes, just think yeah. the, the Masuno <laughs> brothers uh, in this world would just be a disaster, and I would love <laughs> to see every part of it. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're they are the worst human beings, and that's why they're, they're so much the worst. Fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, I I have no further comments on that. Those, those are all some, some very fun choices. That oh oh God, I would love to see some of these happen. <laughs> All right, our next question. This one is coming at us from Kenny. Besides Rising of the Shield Hero, what are some of your favorite anime? Ooh. Oh. Oh, um, oh. Go ahead. Go, go for it, Morgan. Okay. So my all-time favorite is Code Geass. Yes. It's incredible. Yes. I love it so much. And then there's Here's also the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, another goat. <laughs> my favorite. Because the villains are so cool. And oh, it's it's Brotherhood. It's so much better than the original series. I'm just putting that out there. It's so great. Um, we, we can debate that. I mean, <laughs> but, no, no. I, I will say, I will say, Brotherhood is better overall. I will say there, there's some moments in in the original that like are just really good because they got the time for that. I totally you know. get that um, because they did cut some scenes in Brotherhood, <laughs> but also the one thing that I do like about the, the original Full Metal is that you get more time with Maze Hughes. More, there's yeah. more episodes yeah. with him yeah. when yeah. compared to Brotherhood. I think you only get like 10 episodes with him. When compared to the original, you get like 25 episodes with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I if I did my math right. <laughs> but yeah, that's my Sounds answer. Right. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, no. Billy, do you want to go first? Oh, no, you go. Oh, okay. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is probably my favorite anime of all time. Uh, mostly because of the English dub. Um, and because, because I don't know, like a combination of like 1992 anime and like a 2000, 2001 dub somehow makes it like classic. And so even though it's aged, it's like aged well to the point where it's like, okay, this can like, this is like a forever product. Um, I like my own show, Great Pretender. It's, it's really fun. Uh, I love like, like every frame is like a, is like a work of art, uh, in that show. Uh, the characters are sort of fun. Uh, I love both the the Japanese and the English performances. Um, I mean, that show particular in particular that was I, I feel like that was like my Cowboy Bebop in the sense that like because it was the first show that I did in pandemic, uh, we were just like screw it, let's just take our time with every single line, and that never happened. Oh, wow, yeah. right? Like that never. literally never happens because it's always about you know like a quick turnaround, but like because of technical issues and this that this and that we literally got to spend as much time as we needed per line and so like i gave my heart and soul in that performance and uh if i if i like retired from anime after that i'd be okay with that because i did great pretender um but these days uh i mean uh i mean i really i'm really enjoying my hero academia uh odd taxi Oh, uh, that is yeah. good. Yeah, that is good. Um, oh man, I don't know. There's so many. There's too many. But yeah, those are those are currently the ones in uh, floating in my head right now. Awesome. Yeah, some some great choices there. <laughs> I could I could probably just run entire panels just on a few of those alone. So <laughs> we'll continue to everybody else's choices. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think my top three. Uh, my first anime that I ever watched was Fruits Basket. Oh wow. uh, yeah, right. I All right. love fruits basket so much. Yes. Um, I so that's that's up there. Um, also a big My Hero fan. I think that is such a that first episode. If that doesn't make you cry, like check yourself into a doctor. Okay, yeah. no, but uh, I love My Hero, and uh, I think Gurren Lagann was like my first trigger mm. anime that I watched, and it's still just so freaking good i freaking love that one so yeah so yeah that's my top three i think nice all right i have a top five uh, all right oh my god Bring sailor it. moon of course of course uh code Geass. um also fruits baskets yeah. a very small anime that no one's ever heard of and it's called full moon wo sagashite oh wow i haven't heard that title no in a minute <laughs> yeah. okay so you guys no know one's heard this one series so <laughs> freaking much um and then skip beat which is nice. all right yeah. nice. okay <laughs> A very very good mix there. I I, I like yeah. that. We have you know some of some of the you know the the traditional goats and then like these these hidden gems very and then tiny, yes. oh man full moon. I I oh. read full moon. I like I I read the 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 manga and the manga in my opinion is actually better than the anime. Uh, but I I cried solid the last five episodes. Like I didn't stop crying the entire last five episodes. It was disgusting. Yeah, fair warning. If you ever try to check out that show, be be forewarned. It is notorious for having just a gut wrencher uh, of of a finale. So, yep. yeah, if if you want to ruin your feels, <laughs> mm -hmm. best way to go. If you don't want to ruin your feels, but you still want a classic, prepare yourself. Then go ruin your feels. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I think we have time for at least one more. We'll see if maybe awesome. we can sneak in an additional one. But either way, next question coming up. This one is from Janice. Oh, this is always a fun one. What is a dream role or project for each of you? I'm going to open this up a little further. It can also be something that may have already been done. Uh, and this would have just been like, oh, I wish I could have worked on such and such. So that is also fair game. Uh, I see <laughs> Jackie is ready to go. <laughs> what you got? Sailor Moon, I would die. I would die if I was <laughs> any any character in Sailor Moon. But honestly, just like a magical girl. like Because that one's like pretty much done. But like, I want to be a magical girl. Don't we all? And my life will be great. My life Preach. will be complete. I I feel like 
one of my dreams has already been achieved. I got to be in Pokemon, so that was exciting because it was my first obsession as a kid, my first anime. I still love it to this very day. So I'm living that dream. But there's also another series that that's already done that I wish I could have been a part of. It just would have been really cool because it's one of my favorite shows ever, and I'm just a huge part of the fandom. And that's for a series called... Voltron, Legendary Defender. Oh. I am obsessed. You're a super of, fan. Yes, all of my yeah. all of my fans know it. Like my entire fan base knows how obsessed I am because I'm not quiet about it. I'm very <laughs> open about my love for Voltron. So in, in your defense, it was real good. <laughs> it, was it was real so good. good. Right. Oh, so good. I love the character so much. So yeah, I definitely would have loved to be a part of that show in some way. Bailey? <laughs> I think that uh, so the thing that got me into wanting to be in voiceover was uh, Nickelodeon actually like old Nicky, uh, Nick Ooh. 90s Nicktoons uh, from back in the day so yeah. getting to be on a Nickelodeon animated series um, and like be in a table read like on a weekly basis and be a whole part of that whole process like that's the big pie in the sky dream for me right now also, Disney was huge on me growing up, so being a part of a Disney animated series or a uh, right. movie or Pixar or something like that, or anything that ends up in Smash Bros, then I'm a happy, <laughs> happy dude. So, yeah. Oh, man. Nice. Those are great answers. Um, uh, there's, like, a, a few for me. Uh, Dream Roll, I, I would say, is probably, like, a Ninja Turtle. I'd love to be a Ninja Turtle. I'd love to yes. be... Uh, Which one? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I, I So here's the thing is that, like, I thought about this. Like, this, I've actually put thought into this. Um, I love Raphael as, as, as you know, my favorite character. Uh -huh. um, Very nuanced choice. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like, I like, I, I would like a mix between, like, 1990, like, movie Raphael and, like, 87 Rob Paulson snarky Heck Raphael. Yes. Uh, so I'd like something in between where it's sassy and, and, and kind of, like, hot-headed. So if I could play that, that'd be cool. Um, Heck yes. oh gosh, who uh, oh, I just had the uh, the, the, the answers in mind. Um, uh, I'd love to play uh, Nightwing from the Batman Ooh, series, all right? Batman franchise. Yes. Um, oh, and uh, uh, be in either a Studio Chizu film or like a, a Studio Ghibli film. I mean, that would be Ooh. right, like, oh man, Ooh. if <laughs> I know they're gonna be delivery <laughs> casting, but uh, man, I'd love to play. Like, like a significant role in one of them. Yeah. Oh no, I want no. I mean, like if if it's a dream, I want like the a significant part. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would that would be pretty solid. <laughs> oh, those are those are some fantastic answers from all of you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, since we are coming up on the end, uh, I guess we'll start to to wrap it up here again. Thank you so much to all four of you for for being here. Yeah, thank you for these wonderful right. answers and anecdotes. And of course, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay informed. We'll see you again soon here at GalaxyCon.